Guys, thanks for being here today. Um, not the easiest of topics to talk about, but um, you two are definitely people that I uh, know personally, good friends of mine that I know you guys have overcome some stuff in your life. And uh, I think it's always important helping other people and to address the issue of uh, mental health. So guys, let's just jump right into it. Justin, I know that you have, uh, you've kind of battled some of that in your in your time. And so if you could just share a little bit about that. Yeah, so I think the I think the biggest thing with in in the world, not necessarily my struggles, but in the in the world and how it's perceived is is something we don't talk about. So I think that's the first thing is just thanks for asking the question for for bringing up the topic because I think we we fail to talk about it. And um, in my experiences, when we don't talk about it, it gets worse. And when we keep it to ourselves, it gets worse. Um, you know, whether, you know, some personal stuff, I, you know, I used to drive down the road and I'd have to stop in my truck and just cry, you know, just, and not know why and not be able to, not be able to articulate what's wrong or how to fix it, but just cry, you know? Yeah. Just, and how do you even explain that to somebody? Like when you don't know why it's happening right? or what, right. I just, yeah, I'm crying. I don't, I don't. Yeah. You want to, you know, if you don't mind, uh, giving us an example of some stuff that, and kind of how you, what you've dealt with, how you came to deal with that, things you've kind of had, um, that helped you overcome that. Yeah. So, I mean, being, um, you know, father of five married, um, you know, I think it's probably true for most men. We got to carry a different burden, uh, just being the, the, the father of the house, the man of the house and, um, sometimes you know especially this time of year things get stressful are you doing the right thing are you getting the right thing are you you know are are we running our household the way we're supposed to there's so much that goes into just being the man of the house that um has weighed on me for for years um and it was it was you know a few years ago i got to a point where i was just breaking day you know i talked to you about stopping in the truck and that was happening regularly and, um, it was just, you know, it wasn't anything specific, but what I found was when I started leaning into, um, people, whether it be my wife or my friends, um, and leaning in and just saying, man, times are tough. Um, I was, I was able to not articulate what was wrong, but that something was wrong. And, um, it was, I was able to get through those things a little bit better, you know, Hey, I'm. I'm struggling. Um, sometimes, you know, if I was talking to you, Ryan, and saying, hey, I'm struggling, and you're like, well, what are you struggling with? I don't know, man. But just being able to tell you that I got some problems um, helps me walk out of the situation or the conversation a little bit better, even if we didn't address anything, you know? So I started sharing, hey, I have to stop on the road and cry. Why? I don't know. Is it me? You know, if I was talking to my wife, it's, you know, she she's a, she's beautiful, and she but she thinks... Which was, well, is, is this my problem? Is this something I'm doing? You know, so sometimes we don't open up to our spouses because we don't want them to have to carry that burden. Yeah. I remember a lot of those times when, like you said, you're just out of it. You don't know what's wrong. And like, I would get, I would get mad at Carrie, my wife, because she would be asking me what's wrong. Like what? what's going on? And I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. And it was just so like, it's so frustrating to, to feel that way and not have any reason to point to why. Um, did it keep it, you more quiet? Oh, did definitely. Quiet? I mean, I was, I was already that way from growing up and just like when I was younger, my parents divorced and that kind of stuff and going through all of that made me very much just not really talk about my feelings, um, with anybody. And I mean, I guess that's a, it's kind of a natural thing for most guys anyway, probably is that I'll deal with it. It's my 
problem, you know, and I'll tough it out and figure it out or yeah. get over it, whatever it may be. I was in my thirties before I realized that, um, my dad leaving was a huge problem for me, mm. you know, was something that I held on to and just had in such a deep pocket that, you know, I didn't know why I was so angry. I didn't know why yeah. I was so bitter, depressed, but after, you know, some, some things, um, kind of came to lie and I was able to say, yeah, my, my parents splitting up when I was young created this issue that I never dealt with. Yeah. So it's a, it's something we carry and just hide, keep it, keep it to ourselves and pretend like everything's okay. Mm -hmm. Go about your day. Everything's all right. It's okay. Then you stop when you're by yourself and let it all out. Yeah. And I think it's even harder sometimes. I'm knowing both of you personally, uh, I can be intrusive. <laughs> so I'm like, Hey man, what's going on? Justin, what's going on? And, uh, both of you have come around to that now of who, how I kind of handle that thing. But both of you were very like, I'm good, man. Like you're fine. You know what I mean? And, and even to the point where now both of you are kind of like that a little bit, like if I've had, if I've had some, you know, down times or I'm in a funk or whatever, like, Hey, just making sure you're good. Like, and you both never used to be like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, uh, that's cool to see some of that growth and some of that, yeah, but it's important to have, to, you know, those of us who struggle, we will blow it off time and time and time again, but eventually we'll give you a real answer, you know? So when we say we don't talk about it and you ask once or you ask twice and then you just, okay, well, it must not be anything or he doesn't want to talk about it. I think deep down we want to talk about it. Yeah. He just don't know how. So, so somebody like you being willing to pry or, you know, anybody out there in the world who's like, Hey, you know, how do I ask? How do, it's really just kind of, I don't want to say annoying. That's the word that's come to mind. Cause yeah. it never really are annoying, <laughs> Yeah, but it does get frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. For all the viewers, be like, yeah, he's annoying. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 I mean, it really is. It's a matter of like kind of pestering. Like, Hey, if you, if you seen somebody struggling, pester him. It's okay. Yeah. So, you know, they'll appreciate, I think for the most part. Yeah. Well, it's hard though. Like, cause some people, I mean, I don't, it's just a hard thing to understand if you haven't been through it or you don't deal with it. Um, I feel like so many people, like it's getting better at this point with people talking about mental health and identifying what it really is. But I feel like for so long and for a lot of people, being depressed is just like you're sad yeah. you know about something and like yeah. w either what's the big deal or okay everybody gets sad you'll you yeah. get over it kind of thing but it th and that was for me i guess when before um before i actually realized like oh maybe i should try to get some help for this yeah um that it was that point where you get to realizing like there's no reason for me feeling this way. I can't figure it out and I can't control it. And, you know, it was probably, I don't know how long ago it's been now, probably seven years. I don't know, somewhere in that range where, um, I actually got some medication yeah. for it that I actually talked to my doctor about it and then come to find out, like I talked to my mom about it and she was so glad that I did something because she dealt with it and never got to the point of getting help until she was in her fifties, you know, you and I talked about that before you got help. No, we really never talked about it. And I feel like that, I mean, that made me think, I wonder if she knew or could see that it was there. Like, I mean, we had a, a lot of time apart, um, when I was in college and stuff, we weren't together super often. So, um, I probably hit it pretty well. You know, it's like, unless you catch me on the right day, yeah. you're not going to know. Yeah. But it was for me, I'm like, you know, there can even be a little bit of embarrassment that like, I've got to take medicine for this or, yeah. or just the fact of, you know, in some religious circles, the thing is like, no, you just need Jesus and yeah. to get over it, Yeah, you know, and which is incredibly unhealthy. And, you know, I'm certainly in the camp of like, you know, God gave people this knowledge and we have doctors that make medicine and things that can help us. And, um, you know, it's just, I don't feel like medicine has changed who I am. 
Yeah. You know, or really made everything happy and sunshine every day, but it's, it's allowed me to deal with that kind of stuff. So I don't, I don't know what your experience is with that side of things. Yeah, no, I've had, I've, uh, there was, it was it been a few years ago. Um, I started taking this medicine and I started feeling so much better. And I was like, wow, like I've waited for a long time to f- be able to feel a certain way. And it turns out it's just a chemical imbalance, right? Yeah. There's a chemical imbalance inside of my head that makes me feel a certain way. That's why I can't explain it. Right. So maybe it's not circumstances. The problem is medication does come with some side effects. So I, I chose to stop taking my medication uh, due to side effects. And then I've rolled back into the same um, roller coaster of, well, I don't want to, I, I tried and I did this. Yeah, I felt good with side effects. And I, I'll just continue to deal with this on my own, right? Yeah. Um, because you don't want to go tell Doc, hey, also got these side effects. <laughs> it's just tough, you know what yeah. I mean? So it just gets, it's so hard to just be real in the world out of humility, shame, whatever, Yeah, um, that it kind of keeps us battling this stuff um, on our own. Even, you know, we reach out every now and again and, hey, I need some help. Um, and, there, it, you know, the, the, the most awesome thing that I've learned in in my years of dealing with this is every single time that I've come up to reach out and and look for help it's always there it's yeah. always there every single time when i'm like hey i need some help um sometimes i wish people would just ask or yeah. you know maybe reach out to but um every time i've reached out so you know if it's something if you're dealing with if you're dealing with it out there in the world like don't be afraid to say help me because yeah the people will help so and i mean there's there's so much of it that like you said, it's almost like an experiment trying to figure out, well, you've got all this line of medicine that might work for you, so we're going to try it. Yeah. But yeah. that also kind of leads me to, like, there is no one answer for everybody. Like, every situation is so different, and this thing might work for you, and it might not work for somebody else. Yeah. And that's hard yeah. to deal with, too. I think that this person is like, oh, I just had to get this medication, and it helped everything. And you tried but that. that might not work, you know? And so it is, man, it's such a process to, yeah. to yeah. go through. But that's why there's so many different, that's, there's, there's different medication. Yeah. Serotonin uptake inhibitors are good for some people and some people don't need that serotonin to be inhibited. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, some people need more of it. So it is, a, it's a trial and error. Um, and not everybody, I don't want to sound like everybody needs medication. Yeah. Cause I, you know, um, not medication's not always the answer. Yeah. You know, um, sometimes it's counseling. Sometimes it's having somebody that'll listen with an unbiased, um, motive. Yeah. You know, I don't, I'm here to listen. You know, it's, it's one thing to talk to a friend, um, or wife or spouse, but talking to therapists or counselors is, is never a bad idea. Yeah. Um, they, there's stigmas around that too, but, yep. um, you know, having somebody that'll just listen is huge do you feel like uh and you touched on this a little bit earlier but and <clears throat> do you feel like you know both of you are in like leadership roles both outside of like you know just your family home dynamic like you own a company and run a company lead a company um you also are like a leader in like your church setting you're in the same boat you're a manager at a factory uh leading a lot of people and you and same thing at church do you feel like uh some of the not being able to talk to it is because you feel like you always have to be on at a certain like level of I cannot deal with this right now I I used to I used to that was you know I used to go into situations as whether as the 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 leader at work uh, running the meeting or or you know running the worship set that I had to have it all together and I, I don't do that anymore I think you know the 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 Bible tells us to to share our weaknesses, to boast in our weaknesses, actually, because that's where God is more strong. And um, I have, you know, in and that's in Second Corinthians chapter twelve. And since reading that verse, I have been very intentional about um, sharing that I'm struggling and and saying, hey, you know, even at work, it's been it's been beautiful, like to be able to tell my teams, hey guys, I'm I'm struggling. And I don't, I don't have it today. Yeah. You know, I don't have it today. I need somebody else to pick it up. 
you know, or I just need to sit and observe. Um, it's again, when you come up for that breath to say, Hey, I need help. It's amazing. Whether it's at work or church that people are there every time to just, Hey, I got you, you know? So when we think we, we ha- there's this false, um, misconception that, that we've got to, we've got to hold on so tight because we're the leaders and we hold, we're the glue that keeps the family together. Um, that we've got to continue to do that. But if we come out and say, Hey, help me out. Um, it's funny. There's other leaders out there. There's other people that are willing to prop you up. So I used to, I did used to, but I I think, um, really being Mm -hmm. intentional about saying, I don't got it. I'm, I'm, I'm not ready today. Yeah. Um, and kind of hand that off. I think that's helped me a lot. So I don't know about you. Yeah. I mean, I think that's where, whether, um, on the religious side or not, the concept of servant leadership is a big thing. And I think that just, I mean, the phrase lead by example is thrown around a lot, Mm. but I think there's still that tendency to like, I gotta be, I gotta be the one, I gotta have all the answers. I gotta make sure everybody's doing their thing and they can't see weakness, weakness in me, you know, and some of that, um, I think can just be our own insecurity Yeah, that we're like, well, if they see weakness, then they're going to go after that, Yeah, you know, especially in the, in the business world. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think when you see people who have been true leaders, they're the ones who have inspired people and they don't do that by pointing the finger and bossing them around They're they're working with them and they're showing them how to lead, you know, and they're bringing up other leaders and that's how you do it. Has the, has your faith played a factor into um, you being able to cope with and overcome some of those things better? Either one of it. Yeah, I mean, I think so. I, again, I, you know, I'd say Second Corinthians twelve nine. Um, you know, the the Bible speaks to us at different times, um, and in different ways. This the same scripture may not hit someone else the same way. Um, but for me, it was, it was that, um, right time coming across that verse, um, you know, so scripturally, but in, in faith, we, you, you talked about it, the, the faith over medicine, right? Um, sometimes it is, um, a little bit more faith times it is a little bit, you know, so like what's right, what's wrong is so touchy because like, do I need to. Do I need to lean on Jesus? Do I need to lean on the teachings that he, you know, the the yeah. stuff he gave other people for the medicine? Um, but I've personally found that in my prayer time and the and the more time that I spend focusing on Jesus and and walking closer with him, that I don't struggle as much. Um, I don't want to say it goes away, like, oh, Jesus took this anxiety from me. Yeah. Um but I do feel like when I'm in his word and when I'm, when I'm walking and just, you know, I wake up in the morning and I pray, God, um, how do I, what, what do I need to do today? And I, and I listen, I don't just speak the words, but then I listen. I do feel like those are better days, you know? So I don't know, again, I'm not saying, you know, Jesus takes my anxiety away, but I do feel like the days that I'm closer to him, I'm further from anxiety. So I do think that there's some reality in that. And I think you're like, for me then, and probably for a lot of people, the natural response is to try to fight it. Yeah. You know, like, and that's where, um, you know, I couldn't do that (laughs) Mm. as much as you try when, but it's just so out of your control. And I think that's where, um, you know, the faith comes in that when you just relinquish that control of, you know what, I, I can't handle this Yeah, and there's freedom in saying, I can't handle this and I'm not going to be able to fight through it. And I think, um, having faith in God to bring you through that in the right way, it may mean like we keep saying, it may mean medicine. It may mean counseling. It may mean any combination of any number of things, yes. but seeking his guidance and all of that, that there's, you can't go wrong that way. Yeah. And so I think that's, 
that's the big, that was one of the big things for me again, is just that kind of letting go of it and freedom that, you know what, it's okay to get help for it. It's okay that you can't handle it on your own. And there are, there are people to help you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I grew up in NA and AA, right? So like a lot of things have just become cliche for me that, you know, the big book and stuff they used. Um, but one of the things that I think step one, I don't know, somebody out there will tell me I'm wrong. I think step one is admitting that you have a problem. Um, and as cliche as a lot of that stuff has been to me, just cause I grew up in it. Um, it holds true in everything that I've ever, um, experienced or walked through admitting that you have a problem is literally the first thing you got to do. Because if you're like in denial, I don't have a problem. You're not going to try the medicine. You're not going to, you, you know, you're not going to reach out to the right person. Um, you're just going to keep carrying this stupid burden for no reason. We, we hold on to it so tightly. Yeah. This is mine. Yeah. You know, um, like Gollum in the Lord of the Rings, you know, it's my precious and I've got to <laughs> fix it. And it's just not, it's not your, it's not your only your problem, right? It's, yeah. There's so many, um, good friends and, and spouses and people out there that are just waiting for you to say, you said you talked to your mom about it after you got medicated, but yeah. how freeing was that conversation for you? Yeah. You oh, said. yeah, totally. I've got and it. And you don't realize, like, you think you're kind of keeping it from everybody so it won't affect them, but it's affecting them so much more because of what it's doing to you. Right. Right. Than if you just let them in, yeah. you know? And yeah. so I think that it was definitely like a huge relief. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I also think being, you know, a friend of somebody who's, Who's, who has dealt with that, it affects them too. Yeah. Like watching somebody not address an issue that you know they need to address. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because like you said, it becomes annoying. Like, all right, dude, stop asking me. Like, I'm fine. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But then you eventually like shy away from that and then you just leave them to their own doing, their own doing and that's harmful for them and for you to watch them go through that. You know what I mean? So... So yeah, as we, as we wrap this up, um, and I appreciate you both being on here and, and being vulnerable and sharing some of your stuff and, and just kind of putting that out there to help other people. But, um, what would be some advice from either one of you that you have, uh, to share with someone who is dealing, um, with what we've been talking about? What would be some, um, advice you have for them? For the biggest thing for me is you are no stronger because you carry it better mm -hmm. or you're no stronger because, um, you don't have to take medicine or you don't have to reach out and do therapy. Like understanding that you are in fact hurting yourself more by holding on to it tighter and just letting go is so freeing. Like, um, whatever you choose, you know, we've talked a little bit about my faith. We've talked about medicine. There's, there's so many avenues out there to address it, um, that I think I would challenge that strength. You think you're, you think you're holding on to it because you're strong. And, and in fact, it's because we're scared. Mm -hmm. It's because we don't know how and, and getting over that cliche stigma that, um, I'm weak. If I reach out, you are so much stronger by saying I need help. Yeah. Whether you're listening to the scripture tell you that or just the truth of the matter is there's so much more strength than saying, I can't do this alone. So just knowing that you're not strong by holding it on or holding on to it, you're stronger by saying, I need help. So be stronger and say, hey, help me um, where, where multiple people are inside of that you have more people. So the more people that you can bring into your inner circle of struggles, the better off you're going to be. Um, so I would say just open up, reach out, say, I need help. That's, that's the biggest thing. And most people out there, um, if you do that, they may not have the answers, but they can point you. Right. So just being willing, I think, Hey, my, my friend, Bill might, might, Hey, Bill, I'm struggling. Oh man, I don't know what to tell you, but 
this guy does, you know, or something. So just start by opening up and it starts by saying, I need help. Yeah. I think kind of the same thing, just that, um, just like I felt like knowing that, um, admitting that you struggle with this or that you need to find help is not failure in one way or another. Mm. Um, cause especially when you're in that place, <laughs> it can very much feel like that. And, yeah. um, also knowing that, you know, not everybody that you reach out to, like you said, is gonna, is gonna respond in a good way. Yeah. And, um, everyone's had different experiences with it, but especially I would say if you know, someone isn't going to respond the right way, there are people who will. And whether it's more comfortable to reach out to someone who's a complete stranger or to close family, whatever that is, just, just bite the bullet and do it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think I would, I would speak for all of us. We can even put it, um, here in the comments of this video or a direct message to us. I can put our email up at the bottom, but yeah. like, I We'll talk to anybody about this because yeah. it's not worth, not worth going through and struggling with on your own. Yeah. Yeah. And you can absolutely put my stuff in there because, um, it's, it's tough to find somebody that can listen, but they're, they exist. Yeah. You know? And it's not because they won't listen. It's tough to find them because we don't want to open up and, and employers. I will say you said that earlier, you know, the world is coming around to understanding there's a mental health issue. And a lot of employers today are offering, like, if you just go in and say, you can even, you could even <laughs> tell a little white lie. Hey, you know, my, my kid is struggling. You ain't gotta, you don't gotta go into your HR and tell them, Hey, uh, I'm struggling with this. You can go in there and say, Hey, one of my kids at home is struggling and needs a therapist or a counselor. What's that contact for the, yeah. you know, mental health or, you know, there's so many employers have, um, mental health lines and free i was gonna say sometimes it's free from almost always now uh almost always now through your employer preventative uh maintenance of health any type is free there's so you know i know um lira is like 16 free sessions um mm -hmm. so that's like 16 times you can go talk to somebody that you don't know they don't know you uh most of the time it's on the phone um, so like I say, if you're, if you don't have the strength to go tell your HR, Hey, I'm struggling, you can go in there and tell them, Hey, it's my kid or it's my, it's my wife or whatever. But all you really need is the contact to talk to somebody that doesn't know you. So you can be a little more discreet. Yeah. Um, so not to encourage, you know, lying or anything, but you know, you just, you need the contact, right? You just need that contact and almost all employers out there have some form of contact of here's someone you can get a hold of regarding mental health so yeah um, i think that's important awesome guys well i appreciate you both i'm glad you guys were opening up to sharing some of your struggles appreciate it